we do not encounter a significant orthodox, and it's important to note orthodox because we know that heretics modified worship very, very early on. <laughs> there is not a significant change in the structure of worship until the Reformation. Father Neil Edlin, I'm the rector of Mary Magdalene Church, Mary Magdalene Anglican Church in Orange, California. And I'm here with Father Paul Castellano. But essentially, he's written a book about worship. And so, um, do you, um, in the book, do you trace sort of, um, it seems the church probably had a pretty, pretty um, continuous style and form of worship for quite a while. Where would you say, I mean, compared to what we have today? Um, outside of liturgical worship with Anglicanism and Orthodoxy and uh, <clears throat> Rome, where do you start to see a divergence from sort of the historical worship that the Church has been doing sort of from the beginning? Yeah. I know you mentioned you talk about Jerome and some of the early fathers and yeah. some of the information you get from them. Does it? Do you start to see? Uh, where's the break? Where's, where's the start to? See yeah, the the, break the challenge that I had was. unpack specifics dealing with those three issues that we previously raised, church organization, ministers, and worship, or deal with the church comprehensively. If I dealt with the church comprehensively, it would have been like three volumes. And that's where what you're asking comes in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The simple way to address this um, without getting too far into the weeds would be to say this. We do not encounter a significant orthodox, and it's important to note orthodox because we know that heretics modified worship very, very early on. <laughs> there is not a significant change in the structure of worship until the Reformation. Moder you know, minor issues here, tweaks here and there, sure. but as far as the broad pattern of what we do, whether you're Rome, Eastern, or Anglican, um, the broad pattern is that government structure and ministerial function, for the most part, remains the same. Yeah, but there are some very key issues in the book that are addressed, such as um, if if this pattern is the pattern, what do we do with deviation, such as the Roman deviation from what we do in some areas, the Eastern deviation from Roman Anglicanism in some areas? How do we address that, even though, as far as church government is concerned, mm -hmm. there's a, a broad similarity? Sure. Um, how do we address that? Well, I, I deal with that in the book, okay. and it has to do with three basic principles. It has to do with um, apostolic doctrine, apostolic succession, and apostolic practice. So I discuss those um Hopefully I've whet your appetite a little bit about sure. that so you, yeah. to take a look at that. But I, I do address that because we will see differences develop early on. The, but the most important difference that has to be truly grasped to resolve a lot of the confusion is that when we look at what we're talking about, when we're looking at um, the church, when we're looking at worship, when we're looking at ministerial orders, the key to keep in mind is that the transition primarily was from a mosaic theological understanding of the structure to a Christological interpretation of the structure. So if we see, let's just use church government for an example. If we see the church structured a certain way in the Old Testament, and then we come to the New Testament and we see Christ and his fulfillment of the mosaic economy, where do we draw the line in continuity? Because it can't be the same. It can't be identical in that sense. 
Well, we draw the line when we when we draw the line in saying, okay, we maintain the structure until it diverges from Christolog the Christological interpretation and fulfillment of that structure. That Christological interpretation and fulfillment doesn't eradicate the entire structure. It simply modifies it. And the key to that is to recognize that that modification didn't occur all at once. It couldn't. It had to come with the, the, the revelation of Christ through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to the New Testament authors, primarily Paul, but to the New Testament authors, until we get to the point where just as in the doctrine of progressive revelation, where we understand that God didn't reveal everything in Genesis chapter 1. He progressively revealed, revealed to us what he wanted us to do. Well, the ministry of the Holy Spirit within the church, and I'm for those that are automatically going, hey, 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 no, I'm not talking about a Roman magisterium. I'm just talking about how the Holy Spirit functions within the body of Christ in general. The, the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit within the church was also progressive. The Holy Spirit had to take us from the teaching of Jesus post his murder and ascension and seated at the right hand of heaven. He had to take us from that to get us to the point where, okay, my Jewish brethren, you understand your heritage. You now know that you are the true Israel. But as the true Israel... You're the true Israel that worships its Messiah. Therefore, how do we incorporate all of that? Well, that couldn't just happen overnight. The Holy Spirit had to work within the church, had to work within the New Testament writers. The New Testament writers were led by the third person of the triune Godhead to lay out the information, and then the church simply started to assimilate it all. And once the irrevocable break between the New Testament church and Judaism occurred, depending upon whether you want it to be one final break or whether you want it, when you want to talk about the, the, the first serious break with Bar Kokhba in 135 and that revolt. The fact of the matter is the full-orbed, comprehensive formulation of who the church was probably didn't become like a settled cake, if you will, until about, you know, the late second, early third century. <laughs> but all of the elements were in place. They, they were all there. They just had to work out the fine details, which was the Holy Spirit progressively moving the church along.